Welcome to Financial Literacy Class 101. Our topic of today is how can I stop this impasse spending habit? So this is a case scenario. You meet somebody who has just graduated, graduated from campus. Then after graduating to campus, they are lucky to get a job. And uh, maybe they get even a good job that is paying worth 50000 so there is that transformation from the campus life to, to now to now to the real life situation. Now as they are spending their cash, you see they have got a good job and they are being paid fifty thousand and they is a single. So if they are single in they are they are they are single, it means the responsibilities are less. And they had been used to spending little cash in their student in their student life. You meet somebody being paid fifty thousand, they are living in a bed still which is seven thousand. So they remain with 43,000. Then maybe six, six is deducted by the payee. So they are, they remain with, with that, that, that 7,000 Kenya shillings. With that 7,000 Kenya shillings, they can have an impulse of 5,000 per month. That is 20. Since the remaining, the remaining 17 can still sustain them. You see, you meet somebody who has a culture, such a culture, they, at one time, once they get married, they will be having a spending habit. And with time, things will catch up. So, that is why we have this video, how can I stop the impasse spending habit. If you are from my TikTok, TikTok, thank you for coming and ensure you, after the video, you are able, you're able to comment. Also, for my returning subscribers, I appreciate you and I will be happy to, to see you comment so that in comment section, that's the only way we can interact and I will be, I'll be aware that from my house, I recorded, the, I recorded the video and from where you are, you are able to, to, get, to get the message. So, let us go to suggestion number one. How can I stop my impasse spending habit? Important for partners to openly and honestly discuss their beliefs and views of money. So you meet, you meet for the partners, for the partners, and especially in marriage, even in your talking stage, it is important that you discuss your views of money because there are three types of people. There are people who, are, who have the scarcity mentality. So they since they have the scarcity mentality they view money as a root of all evil so it means anytime they get they get uh, their money they have these these their way to express themselves they always have to show that maybe i'm earning more than you are earning or maybe they always have to show that that once they get their cash the way to express themselves is that of a spending that is why you'll go maybe in a club you find somebody is buying everybody beer yet they have not paid their rent that is that is the notion of 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 the scarcity mentality that point that they have to prove to the young employees to their classmates to their colleagues mates to their friends to their mates that they are doing well in life more than others Others, others have been brought up in very lavish lifestyle. So you meet that somebody by the time you are, you maybe you might be, you might, you might be, be your parents have aged up and they already, their parents were financially literate and they were able to build the lifestyle that you are in now. Forgetting that at one time the parents took time and they sacrificed for you to lead the lifestyle, for you to be taken to the to the type of schools you are you are, for you to be given to the life the kind of lifestyle that you are living as a student. So that is something that affects us. That is why it is important for partners to openly discuss and and uh, their view, their beliefs and views of money. You get it. Some people believe it's the root of all evil. Some people have scarcity mentality. Some people have been grown, brought up with very hard situations such that they value so, money so much, such that any time they get money, money, they will tend to retain it. So that is an, another dynamic. Understand each other financial behavior and financial perspective. You get it. So that is why, why we said this situation you made somebody has grown up from very well up family and they all they are they have seen their life their parents live their full life because their their parents have already reached the stage that we say financial freedom financial freedom is at a stage that you've known from my lifestyle i need 110000 and they have either rental incomes or they have shares or they are getting dividends dividends from real estate investment trust or maybe their interest per month from the money market fund is already over 110,000. So the parents do not really need to work. 
then you meet the the parents already had a, had several more several streams of income so by the time the kid is growing up they will tend to fit in that class not knowing once they they start their life from the student they cannot be able to keep up with that lifestyle so that is something which comes to the financial behavior and perspective the way you perceive money you perceive money that is very important upbringing influences and shapes our financial attitude so there is that thing we have said financial attitude there is this person who who've been brought up maybe life was not maybe they have been brought up by single mother they were struggling they were always taught maybe any time he would come from school then maybe he goes and opens the mother's business and maybe we meet we meet somewhere maybe a, a kid selling key, selling eggs for the mother so that that kid normally at long long end they become very financially literate and they'll be great businessmen because from young age the mother had trained them for us to eat supper you need to sell these eggs so any time after school you have to sit they they want they had to sacrifice instead of going playing with the other kids or going having their good time they had to come to the mother to the mother open their business and continue selling eggs so that is why we are saying the way you are brought up shapes your financial attitude there is this person who 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 has been brought up and the, and they knew that money is the root of all evil money is evil so you will meet any time they get their cash it is party after party party after party until the last coin until the the last coin drains that is when they get to their soberness and they start they start borrowing hustling and uh, uh, struggling the, uh, to to push the month after the month any time they are paid they never learn a lesson that is a person who is financially illiterate and they are likely to be struck by something we call financial suicide Financial suicide is a situation that you are spending more than you are earning. Any time your expenditure is more than you are earning, where you see will come to a, to a deficit, and the deficit means you will be either big bankrupt or you will be you will uh, you will have a suicide in your finance. So spending habits may be influenced by lack of responsibilities. So it's that situation that I've told you. You meet somebody is young, he's single. And he has a very good in uh, he has a very good uh, good salary. So you meet because of lack of responsibilities. The parents are able and they do not have black tax. So you meet through that that enters into his system. And be, because they don't have responsibilities, you meet that they will it will influence the way the way they spend their money. Also, there is this type of brother who is a firstborn, and they have six kids behind them. And any time he knows that his family, he, his family depends on him. Him, he does not depend his, in his family, but the family depends on him. So this person has to know that he 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 has to support the siblings, and also he has to start his family. So you meet that person. By the time the siblings are done, they'll make a lot of great strides because any income they got. They used to had to cater for the siblings, so that that so that that, that is the, that dynamic. So lack of responsibilities also influences the the habit, the the influences the spending habit. You get it, and that is something that uh, somebody needs to review so that to 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 be able to stop the impasse spending habit. Impasse spending habit is these that you are buying unnecessary things. You are you are getting the uncalled of things. Sometimes you might maybe you might be having for uh, like uh, ten suits. Ten suits will be okay. Will be okay. But you you meet somebody is exaggerating. They have too much. Now what? Now that getting too much that cannot that is against what you are earning or what you are you are getting that extraordinary expense that going an extra mile in spending. Well, as you're not considering where you you are your you source of income, that is what brings to impasse spending habit. So something else, understand the money mindset. So it means the value that a person attached the money. So there is this person we said this one is the value that they attach. There are people who who once they have cars they have no value. You they'll start dishing out buying things from hawkers, buying they once they have cash they'll not they are not financial literate and you'll meet once they get a pay rise you meet somebody is being paid today thirty thousand and thirty thousand we said any time the cash that strikes in your bank 
you can only pay rent a third of it. If you're being paid the 30,000, we are expecting around 26,000 is what it hits in your bank. So what, if somebody is earning 26,000, the house that they can afford is a, is a bed, is a bed sitter, which is around nine or, or one bedroom from a, from a, from a very local area. That is around eight to 10,000. That is what they can afford. So you meet, they are being paid 30,000. Then again, they, 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 now all of a sudden they are paid, they are paid, let's say even 60, double their salary. So you meet the next time he moves from a, a bed sitter that is eight thousand all the way to a to a two bedroom which is twenty five thousand. Yet they are single. That's the some of the decisions that you make. You see that person has no value. The mind, the understanding, the money mindset, value attached to the money, the money. And there is this person you meet. They are being paid fifteen thousand. At fifteen thousand, he's able to save two thousand per month. And so it means if that person raises to fifty thousand, he'll be able to spend ten thousand. He'll be able to save ten thousand. Saving, as we said, is paying yourself first. So if you get your salary and you dish, you start paying the la the landlord, your electricity, you you have already paid fare, you 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 pay your your grocery woman is. By that, you are paying people. So once you get your cash, you have to pay yourself first. So that's a, that's a kicker in financial literacy class 11 advice. So budget together. So as a couple or even the single person, budget. The, the essence of budgeting is you are able to dictate your cash where it goes. You are able to know that that by the time I am paid, I get the, the 30,000, this will go to rent, this will go to, to home for black tax. You have a budget so that in, in case anything surpasses, you cannot go, you cannot go beyond, or beyond that. You will meet if you have been paid 20, 20, 20, 30,000 and maybe 27 is what it's in your bank account. You clearly know my rent is 9,000. You clearly know that 5,000 is what I, I use in black tax. So in case you, you are in gap and you meet people are requesting so much more than you can afford. You can afford you need to write your own budget once you, you draft down your budget you will be knowing that once i get my money the first thing i pay is the i pay school fees to my kids the second thing is i contribute to the circle the third thing i put this amount to the money market fund because we said pay yourself first you have to take a share take saving as an expense the way you cannot avoid rent in that month is the way the same way you cannot avoid saving a chunk of your percentage for future future rainy days so that is why why we say we say this uh, what as a couple you need to dis discuss your income your expense your savings and your individual sp spending. That is financial planning. This applies to couples and even to those people who are single. If you are a couple, you need to clearly know the husband gets 50,000 per month. You, you are paid. The lady is paid 20,000 per month. That comes to 70. So it means that family has an income of 70, 70%. You, one thing that you decide the income, if the income is less, you have to strategize, maybe get a multiple income or maybe add value. Adding value means you can learn a skill and maybe in your job you'll get a higher pay. You can also pursue a master's project where maybe the same job you're working the, this, so that you, are, you start being paid by value, not the time. So that, that is the way, the way you increase your income. Expense. You need to highlight the expense. The non-negotiable expense. The recurrent expend, expenditure. You cannot work without paying rent. Where do you live? Unless you're living with your mother, which is somebody who is 30 year, 30, 27 years living with their mother at the expense of saving their rental income. But I understand there are different case scenarios. There's this person living in Gaff and, and uh, the Gaff in Dubai, and maybe they do not pay rent. If they don't pay rent, that is understandable for understandable and understandable for them. But you having a mentality that you are 27 years old and you are saying that in the name of saving rent, you live at your mother's place. You are not making progress, and it's time you 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 it's it's time you visit a counselor and get guide guidance. So again, we said saving. You need to clearly say saving. You need to decide saving. How, how, what, how much will you be saving? Because there comes a, there comes a time, there are unpredictable situations. You meet, you, are, you have lost your job. What do you do? You have to be, you, that is why we have to save individual spending. There are 
different people have different things. There's a person who has six, six siblings behind him. So him educating the siblings is very important. And there is this, there is this lady who, who maybe her mother is single and is a single mom and the mother maybe is also renting. So maybe this lady paying the rent for her mother is as nece necessary as you are doing. That is why as, you, as a couple, as your budgeting, you need to provide that individual spending. There is this person maybe has to support somebody from home and to you it is not relevant. And the same way it's not relevant is the same way you don't see why they should be paying for their, for their mom the their rent. So that is why you have to give that allowance for individual spending. Another thing that is part of financial planning. We said as a couple, ensure you have a joint account. Joint account means that every month since maybe in the next two, three years we'll be having kids. After the payout, after we are paid salary, somebody will be saving this tank. And the joint account are done this way. In money market fund, you can get, you can invest in a joint account. In money market fund, once you get your kid, you can have a junior account. I have rolled other other tutorials talking about money market fund. Just scroll in my videos, you will find clear explanations how to join money market fund, what it entails, what is its percentage per per year, which is given twelve to eighteen percent. Get to that. So consider a joint account well well maintaining a personal one. This pulls resources together for shared expenses. Once you have a joint account, it will pull together resources for the shared the, for the shared expenses. Things like rent, you have to come up with your policy, your policy how to educate how to educate, but do not allow those companies selling you financial uh, policies, those policies in the name, somebody is selling you an, ins an insurance in the name of an investment. Let them go buy an education policy or a health policy as an insurance, but not as an investment. If you don't need it, don't require it. You get it. Sometimes telling you that you need to save to save this amount of money for the next that 13 years for your money to mature that that you can redeem it is is, is something that is is not real. So plan for future and set aside for 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 eventualities. So you need to plan for future, be knowing that maybe in the next two years we'll require a kid and. The income that you are earning now cannot sustain them. If you are single, you need to know that this lifestyle that I'm leading, should I have a couple or should I get into marriage, this will be then maybe the expenses will hike to two with two with two with times two. So if you are doing in pass in pass spending, maybe you are the guy maybe who goes to the clubs over weekend you're spending over 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 six thousand on friday you spend three thousand on saturday the other three on sunday two that is almost that is almost eight thousand per only per weekend so it means if you have a, if you are to get a couple it means now it will not be eight thousand the requirements will go to fourteen fifteen thousand so you need to plan you need to plan you need to set aside money for adventures Caution against drastic, drastic changes that may arise for from uh, from job job loss. You always need to set that amount. The reason you save is taking caution because some unexpected circumstances might happen, like a job loss or maybe you might break your leg. Once you break your leg, does it mean you need like six months, six months, and maybe your job is in tenth floor in somewhere in Upper Hill? You see, you will have the the work place has to either negotiate either either you are on a on a sick leave which which will be unpaid ten months. By the time you are getting to ten months, you will not be paid. So that is why you need to strike a balance so that you will be financially literate. So seeking professional help. So the last one is seeking professional help. Sometimes. As partners, it becomes difficult advising a partner. So because the partner sees your influence. If you call your friends, they will see there is a bias because this is your friend. And if they call their parents, you have that you have that that notion that now it's her parents advising me because I'm financially literate. And so because it is our families, they might tend out to favor them. That is why you need at some time time you need to, to seek professional help. So today we had a topic of how to stop impasse spending habit. I'm Jogu, a land surveyor, 
and a financial consultant. I will be happy you comment in the comment section. And if you're getting educated, ensure you share this video in your, in your family group. Share it in that Christian group. And iyo chama yenyu. The, ch the chama that you have share the video so that we may continue i'll be happy just to appreciate my long hours of research and show you leave a like and a comment once you leave a like youtube will suggest this content to other people thank you